Heidi here from Rain Country, God is good, all the time. And I'm here for another frequently asked question. And today it's about, do I blanch my vegetables before I dehydrate or freeze them? And so I get this question quite a bit, and I have answered it in other videos. It's really working out great to have these individual videos where I answer these questions like this. So the next time somebody asks me that question, I can just link them to this video and make it easy. So the basic answer is no, I don't blanch anything. And I'll explain why in a minute, but before I move on, now these are not my dehydrated potatoes. I do grow my own potatoes, but my, like I have two of them right here. I harvested these six months ago. Well, I don't know if I harvested them six months ago, but we've been eating on our 2020 potatoes for the past six months. So here's a couple of them. We probably have enough to last us several more months. I think we might actually have enough to get us through until our 2021 potatoes are ready to harvest. However, I do still like to buy the Mother Earth Products potatoes dehydrated. I would dehydrate these, but I like using my own homegrown ones as fresh as I can. And then I buy the Mother Earth Products dried potatoes so that I can extend what I have for using these in other dishes like fried potatoes or making moussaka or any other kind of potato dish. And then what I use these for is tossing into soups and stews. That's pretty much all I ever use these potatoes for. But anyway, all that is to say that potatoes. If I ever get into dehydrating potatoes myself, those are the one thing I would blanch. And the reason for that is because they will turn black and not look very desirable because they will oxidize if you don't cook them a little bit first. They don't have to be cooked until they're really soft. They just need to be cooked clear through to the center and then you can dehydrate them. You can either slice them up and dry them or you can dry them in cubes like this or however you want. Some people like to make hash browns, grate them up and then dehydrate them that way. So that's a really good option. But yes, that is the one food I know for sure you need to blanch first. I have tried blanching some things before freezing or dehydrating in the past. And in the, it's only two things have I done that with. And in both cases, it was a disaster and I said I'm never doing this again. One of those was the rhubarb. So when I first was growing rhubarb and I was trying to figure out what's the best way to preserve it besides just cutting up and freezing it and of course making jams and syrups and stuff out of which I do that too. But if I wanted it uh, ready to go for making pies or anything else, I mean freezing it was a really good method but of course those a lot of us are looking for ways to not only free up freezer space but also to find ways to be less dependent on the freezer so I decided I'd try dehydrating some so I looked online and looked online and I kept finding everything says well you must blanch rhubarb first and okay so I did I blanched it and then I dehydrated it and I hated it I mean the flavor and the color wasn't bad, but what happened was, even though I just blanched it, I didn't cook it, it turned basically to mush and it stuck to my dehydrator terribly, just something fierce. And it wasn't, it didn't hold its shape like this. These are the ones I did in 2020 and I did a video just on this. So the next time I went to dehydrate, I tried just taking the raw rhubarb, slicing it up and dehydrating it like that. Perfect, turned out perfect. But then here comes the next question. Well, how does it cook up? Because sometimes the reason when it comes to dehydrating, you want to blanch things first, is it makes them rehydrate better. That's some of the reason right there. Here's the trick, whether it be beans, snow peas, rhubarb, whatever it is, when you go to cook it, even though it was dehydrated raw, same thing for carrots, I've dehydrated them raw. Again, a lot of this stuff will rehydrate better if you cook it first, as long as you're cooking them into a liquid, they will rehydrate and then they're cooking at the same time. So I've done that with rhubarb and then I can't remember what I did with it. I was mostly experimenting to see how well it would rehydrate. As long as you're cooking it while you're rehydrating it, it's not a problem. And the thing is when it comes to stuff like the dehydrated green beans from my own garden, and the dehydrated snow peas, also from my own garden. These are things that I'm not gonna rehydrate and use in as a quote unquote fresh 
vegetable. There's something I'm going to cook into something such as a soup or a stew. And so that's how these get used. And so it's not an issue and they cook up beautifully. If you're already going to be cooking that sauce or soup or stew for a long period of time, you put these in right at the beginning. With that in mind, let's talk about the snow peas. Now snow peas, I've never tried blanching first before dehydrating and I never will. But what I did do was again, my first year growing snow peas, I think it was the same first year I was growing the rhubarb. I looked around online, what's, I already knew that canning snow peas wasn't the best method, but that freezing was an excellent method. So I'm looking around and everything I came across said you have to blanch them first. You have to blanch them first. Wrong. So I followed the directions to the T. I blanched them, I steamed them. That was how I blanched them. I didn't boil them for exactly whatever them, it's been so many years now, I don't even remember what the amount of time was. Set the timer, immediately took them out, put them in ice water, stop the cooking process. Then I froze them up. And every package I did that year, I was doing that, I did that several times as I was picking the snow peas. And that was a big mistake. Though I did finally eventually work through all those packages, really did not like them. Did not like them. And they turned to mush and they were just gross. I And I said, I'm never doing this again. So the very next year, I decided I'd do an experiment. So as the snow peas started coming in, the first batch I picked, I just pick, picked a pint. I don't even know if I cut them up. I just put them in the freezer just like that. Didn't blanch them and they were great. They had, that was so much better than blanching. They held their color and their flavor and their consistency a lot better. They didn't turn to mush. Uh, sometimes I might leave some snow peas whole, but now what I do is I, I like to cut them at least in half because usually whatever I'm cooking them in, because some of my snow peas can get pretty long, I do like to have them a little bit smaller. So I'll either cut them into half or thirds and then I'll put them in the little half pint jars and freeze them because that I was doing whole pints but that was a little bit too much a half pint is perfect for what for just the two of us and what we use it for which is usually going to be adding to some kind of stir fry whether it be mixing them in with uh, some bell peppers and onions and having them as a side dish or adding them into a stir fry, like a stir fried rice or stir fried noodles. That works out good and it's so much easier and is saving a step. Now, when it comes to the green beans, because of my experience, by the time I started getting the beans in, uh, cause the snow peas I was growing before I was growing beans. From my experience with the snow peas, I figured I'm not even gonna bother blanching the beans. I just cut them up and froze them. And the, I only was freezing them in the first couple years because at the time I wasn't quite getting enough yet to start canning. And then I started canning them when I was able to get enough at a time that I could, I could can two or three batches in a season. So that's, I love that. Canning is my favorite way to preserve beans. But at any rate, with my experience with the, green, with the peas, I would freeze the beans, just cut them and freeze them right off the vine, and they were great. And then I also decided the year after that to try uh, dehydrating them. And again, uh, these are really good. You can eat them right out of the jar and they're pretty tasty. These are actually from 2018. And then zucchini, absolutely not. I would never, I don't know if anyone recommends uh, blanching zucchini, but it would be silly. So zucchini is best to just cut it up, dehydrate it. It's great this way or freeze it. It'll Either way, it turns out great. And I have videos just on that and how I use the zucchini. And I, every year I'm coming up with new ways to use the zucchini because it's one of the things that we do grow very well here in rain country. Now, the reason I said that about the zucchini is that somebody had recently said that they had seen somewhere, whether it be a YouTube video or Reddit somewhere, that everything has to be blanched before you freeze it or dehydrated. Well, even if you're a one that prefer so I don't know why you would to uh, blanch your snow peas and your green beans before freezing them or dehydrating them I definitely would not recommend doing that with zucchini it would definitely be a waste of time to do that so zucchini rehydrates quite well again it is something that I add to sauces and soups 
that I'm already cooking. So I like to add the dehydrated zucchini to my Italian sauces when I'm cooking that. If you saw my more recent recipe with the moussaka that I can't believe I forgot to add the mixed dried greens blend into zucchini was one of the things I did add to that. So, uh, and then the mixed dried greens, that's another thing I dehydrate. Obviously, I'm not gonna blanch my kale and my uh, dandelion leaves and, and the grape leaves and all the other things that I dehydrate up and put in there. So no, absolutely no blanching on those. And that mixed dried greens blend gets used in a lot of other things. So if you're interested in that, by the way, I will link to that video, my most recent one that just came out down below so you can check out what I put in my mixed dried greens blend as well as how I use it. So there you go. Uh, why bother blanching when it's not necessary for most things? just potatoes as far as I know. Now, what I'd like you to do, if you are one who likes to blanch quite a bit of things, or you've experimented with blanching and not blanching different things, is there any vegetable out there besides potatoes that you would recommend blanching first before either freezing or dehydrating. Go ahead and share that with us down below. And that's especially if you've tried it both ways, blanching and not blanching, so you could actually make that comparison like I did with the snow peas and the rhubarb and came to the conclusion, I will never blanch these things again. So yes, yeah, share with us down below so we can learn from you too. And don't forget to check out my full frequently asked question playlist that I'm always adding to that I will also link to down below. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.